Now we're going to talk about page tables. And the page table is the mapping that keeps track of these virtual address to physical address mappings. And we're going to see in a minute why we call it a page table. So we saw before that we have this map from the virtual addresses to the physical addresses. We're going to call this the page table. What we've seen so far is we had one entry or one page table entry for every virtual address. So here we had one entry for address 512, one entry for 786, because we also had entries for all the words in between these as well. So how big is this? So if we need one entry in our page table for every virtual address, and remember virtual addresses are word access, how many do we need? Well, we need one for every word. So that's two to the 30 or one billion entries. So that means that this table here for a 32-bit program address space has to be able to fit a billion entries in it. And each one of these entries is pretty big. It has to say what's the virtual address and the physical address, so it's at least 32 bits. So that means this is about one gigabyte of memory just to keep track of this page table. So this doesn't sound very good. I mean, we'd have to use up a whole gigabyte of memory just to keep track of the memory for one particular program. So how are we going to solve this? Well, let's talk about page table size. So we need to translate every address. I mean, our programs have a 32-bit virtual address space, and we have to be able to access everything in it, or the programs can't use all their address space. So that's 2 to the 30 words that need page table entries. If we have one entry for every word, it's a billion entries. That's way too many entries. Now, remember, if we don't have a page table entry, then we can't access that location. We need the page table entry to get the physical address so we can actually load the data. So we have to have some sort of page table entry for every single word in our virtual address space. So how can we make this more manageable? Well, here's what we had before. We had this fine grain mapping. Each word was mapped in our table here. What we can do is we can have it in bigger chunks. So we divide our memory into chunks, and we're going to call these chunks pages. That's why it's called a page table entry instead of words. So here's what this looks like with coarse grain. So here we have a whole page. So we're saying that virtual addresses 0 through 4095 are going to map to physical addresses, you know, whatever, 4096 to 8191. So now instead of having one entry in our page table map one word, one entry in our page table is going to map this whole chunk of memory. And we're going to call this chunk of memory a page. So in this case, we have these four kilobyte pages. So each entry in our page table now handles four kilobytes of data. Before, we had each entry in our page table handling one word or four bytes of data. So this is now each chunk here is 1,024 times larger than they were here. So we need 1,000th as many of these entries. Makes our page table much smaller. So now we're going to do this coarse grain pages instead. So our page table is no longer going to man manage entries for each word. It's going to manage entries for each page. So we have fewer entries needed to cover the whole address space. And here's the example. We had four kilobyte pages here. There's also a trade-off. It's less flexible. Before, we could move each word at a time. Here, we're going to have to move 4,096 bytes at a time, four kilobytes every time we want to move a page. So if we need to move something out to disk to make room, we're going to have to move out 4,096 bytes at a time to make room. So today, we typically have four kilobyte pages. It's 1,024 words per page. And here's a question about them. How many entries do we need in our page table now that we have four kilobyte pages for this 32-bit machine? Well, we need one entry for every 1,024 words. It's a four kilobyte page. Each word is four bytes, so that's 1,024 words per page. So that's going to be one million entries. So this is great. Instead of needing a billion entries like we did before, we just need one million. This is enormously more manageable. So before our page table was a gigabyte in size, now it's going to be about four megabytes in size, which is much more reasonable. And in fact, people even go further than this. So today you have lots of 64-bit machines. People are getting very common to use two megabyte pages. So in a two megabyte page, you get 520,000 words per page. This allows you to cover more of memory space with a smaller page table. So there's a trade-off here. Cover more memory space with a smaller page table, but you have to move a whole page at a time, so you get less flexibility. Now, how do we map addresses within a page? So before this was really easy. You just looked up the word address in your page table, and it told you what the physical address. 
Now our page table tells us that all the addresses in this range map to this range. So how do we look something up? So to do this, we think about our virtual address space and our physical address space in pages. So here are the pages. Here's the first page in our virtual address space. It's address 0 to 4095, the second page, the third page, the fourth page, etc. The same thing for our physical address space. We have pages. Now in this example, our physical address space is smaller than our virtual address space, so it has fewer pages. Now we want to go ahead and see how this translation works. So this translation tells us that at virtual addresses 0 to 4095, so that's addresses in this page, our translated physical address is 4096 to 8191. So that's saying that this page is translated over here to this page. So instead of pointing to individual words, we're just saying this whole page gets translated this whole page. Now that's fine, but here's a question. What's the physical address for virtual address 4? Well, the map doesn't have an entry for 4, it just has a map for this range. So how do we translate that? Well, the answer is going to be 4100. So all of the virtual addresses in this range are going to be mapped into this physical page here. So address 4 over here is offset by 4 bytes from the start of this page. So we can figure out where this page maps. It maps over here. And then we know that this word is going to be offset by 4 bytes over here in this physical page. So it's going to be 4 bytes off from address 4096. So it's going to be address 4100. 